All right, this is a night or afternoon, whatever we want to call it, of creativity and relativity. We all relate in some way, shape, or form. And whether you are aware of it or not, we all relate it. This event is COVID-19 friendly since we are not in person. And tonight is centered around Black history. I have on my Black is a Blessing shirt. It's centered around Black History Month. I'm not saying your poems have to be about Black history, but that is just the basis of this poetry night or afternoon. I'm so used to saying night, y'all, so forgive me. We are all a part of Black history in some way. Everyone is created by one non-racist God. So of course, Black is beautiful, but being able to see life in a different spectrum rather than race is more beautiful. So in this beautiful moment, let's have a kingdom time and take the month of February out with a bang. Let's share some phenomenal poetry. Let's have some kingdom conversations and let's exchange information. Let's grow. Now a little bit about me. Hello, if you don't know me, my name is Shy. My poet name is Beauty and Bars. I have been doing poetry since I was five. Uh, that's when I fell in love with it. Um, I have five beautiful sons. I just had my fifth piece three months. His name is Ethan. Last time when we did the Kingdom Fam open mic, I mean, the Art of Melanin one actually, I only have four kids and so now I have five. They are all boys, and y'all may hear my baby in the background. <laughs> um, I'm married. I've been married for nine years this May, and I'm also a business owner. Um, I have two books out, and I do a plethora of things. But I am just blessed to be doing this. Um, once upon a time, I used to be shy. Now I know my name is Shy. But once upon a time, I did really used to be shy. And I used to always say, oh, I'm afraid to talk in front of people and all this. Then I broke out of my shell. I go to open mics. I perform in front of people. I do all kinds of things. So that is I. And let's get the show on the road. Just a few more things to go over. We have plenty of time. The event will end when we are done. I just don't, don't pay attention to that three hour. We are not going to be on here for three hours, okay? I just put that because you never know where poetry goes. You never know if somebody has something to say. They have a testimony. Maybe they want to share a poem because they got inspired. You never know. So that's why I put that time. We will not be on here for three hours, okay? My baby will be like, uh-uh, no. And before you start reciting, I would like you to tell a bit about yourself. Who are you? How long have you been writing? And after everyone does one poem, I will circle around and you may do another if you please. After that, I will see if anyone in the audience has any comments or would like to do a poem themselves. Like I said, maybe they get inspired. Inspired. If you have any books or contact information such as social media platforms that you are on or any websites, Place them in the chat so that everyone can follow one another and support one another. I am all about the support. Now a few rules. No cursing, please. No foul or offensive language or profanity of any sort. When another poet is talking, please mute your phone. That is very important because we don't want anybody having any background noise. Please be respectful. Have fun, express yourself, and be you. Don't forget to do that. Now, I do have two poets that were supposed to be here tonight, but they've had life situations come up, so let's keep them in prayer, please. Uh, Sister Tawana was one of them. Uh, she had a death in her family, so please, please keep her in prayer. And Monifa, which was on the last one, was supposed to be here, but she had a baby, and she also caught COVID-19. So thank you all for listening to me and my spiel. And we will get started officially. I am number one, since I am the one that is running the show.
first poem I will be doing, I will start it and I will end it. So the, uh, the starting poem will be called Historically Me. Do I need a month to celebrate my race? Do I need to praise the melanin on my face? My race is something that I can't escape, but black is beautiful in every single way. Take a listen while I tell you about my history in case there's anyone that sees this as a mystery. In 1990, I graced the world, complete victory, crafted by God with so, I mean, with no symmetry. He created me differently. I was born to a mother that needed love. She thought she could find it in a thug. Her heart she gave, her time she spent. He threw it away and that was it. So here I was innocent to the world, melanin skin, my soul was white as pearls. And as I grew, I knew something was missing. Another little girl fell by the prison system. Another black father out of the home. Another black mother raising a child on her own. Another little girl who was feeling alone, searching for the love of daddy and doing it all wrong. False perceptions of love, cause daddy was here and there. And when he was here, he didn't really care. Witnessed him high on drugs, seen the monster that he was, put his hands on women and I thought that was love. Mama tried to find love in venomous men, but they broke her heart when they lifted their hands. All lying and cheating, the disgust and mistrust painted a distorted nightmare of what it meant to be love. Vibe with me for a minute. I've been through some trials, so many things I wish I knew when I was a child, but then who would I be? Historically me? Watch my lows become my highs and my testimony. It was rough in the beginning, tried to find myself, tried the smoking and the drinking to soothe the pain that I felt. Substituted sex for love in a cry for help. Tried to hide the agony deep within myself. My mom fought for me in the spiritual realm because I was rebellious and headed straight to hell. Broke the hearts of some good men because I was broken within. Tried to be with a woman to feed my love of sin. Should I be ashamed? Because this was my pain. And because of all this, you'll remember my name. This was my story. This chapter is now closed. And what you get is what you see. Hi, I'm Shy, but call me Beauty and Bars. I am creative and audacious. I speak the truth from my heart. I am the mother of five boys. I have cocoa black skin. I've been married nine years, been with my husband for 10. Been a poet since age five, and I published two books. I own the business that I'm building from the ground to the roofs. Don't underestimate my greatness, because I'll come out on top. I'm building for my kings, and I can never be stopped. Don't ever let your lows stop you from soaring the skies. Don't ever let the world tell you you're aiming too high. The world is full of followers, and I'm destined to lead. I'm rising to the top where there's no, not many of me. But I have to be successful for my Black history. My ancestors fought and died so that I could be free. So I have to be the boss I was created to be. I want to hear the God I serve say well done to me. Be proud of who you are and where you came from. You can blossom into roses if you come from the slums. Don't ever let this world get you to conform. Be proud of being different because being a pup is no fun. Love the skin that you're in, yellow, red, black, or blue. We are different shades of beautiful, so be sure to love you. Historically Black, historically free, historically great, historically me. And that is historically me. Openness. <laughs> so the first official poet that I have, I'm not sure if she's on, but it is Miss Sonia Stuckey. Miss Sonia, are you here? Miss Sonia may not be here. I sent her a message letting her know. All right, so we will be moving on. My second poet is Mr. Demetrio. Demetrio? Hold on, give me one moment. I'm trying to find a quiet place to sit. Okay.
Hey, how do I unmute myself? I, I can hear you just fine. You're not muted. Oh, you can? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Oh, okay, sweet. All right. Yeah, because I haven't used Zoom in a while, so. All right. We hear you just fine. All right. Okay. All right. Quietest place was my car, so that's where I am now. All right. I'm um, put show my face to how do I do that click on the start video at the on your screen when you tap your screen you should get an option to start video click that oh there we go okay so all right there we go is that better all right so anyways good afternoon everybody my name is Demetrio and I'm a poet based in Tempe I've been writing since I was around 13 years old and performing for about nine. And that's pretty much it. So this poem I'm going to do is called Life of a Gun. So anyways, I am the power for the powerless, a veneer for cowardice. I can make this life seem hourless. Make foes a treat a reason to indulge in beef spit flames at physiques, leave them lying in the street regardless of their worth to others. I relinquish innocence and peace. When my wrath is unleashed, people scatter from the premises, confined by utter defenselessness. Using Columbine, my design shows a senselessness of violence. I, I reinforce defiance, unwarranted and needed because what I've breeded is revolutionary alliance and my silence. My silence deafening is like that of 10,000 lying. And I tend to be abused and misused. And those who are guilty, they try to use ignorance as a ruse. Like in cases of police brutality, combat the mortals doomed to be fatalities and act casually with the crew. Worse than sues of fallacies, I cause accidents of murder and self-inflicted self immortality and convolute realities, a means for absolution, because I could be a mistake or a bleak solution. Wow, oh, that was a great poem. And you memorized that, huh? Yep. You always memorize all your poetry. You inspire me. My, I be feeling like my stuff is too long to put to memory, but I'm a master that. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely comes in handy. Yes, it does. Yeah, I ain't got to stumble over my words no more because I got it in my memory. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. You're welcome, and thanks for having me. For my next poet, we have Miss. Poet by design. <coughs> no, you know I want to say something crazy, but I ain't gonna say it. <laughs> Appreciate you for not doing that. Show. <laughs> I was like waiting for. I'm like, there she go. <laughs> um, I am Jamie Gray. Go by Poet by Design. I've been writing poetry since the age of nine. I began writing poetry um, when I started out writing letters to my late mother and they transform over time into poetry to her. And then after that, I just started writing poetry. I'm going through high school and my young adult life. And then I ceased to write poetry till I begin again when God woke me up and told me to write to him. So um, that's where my poetry started at. I have um, two books also published and I have a debut album and a sophomore album that came out on my birthday, July 4th, which was just published again, July 4th. So I have two albums of work and two poetry books of work done. I don't have a merch site right now because I shut it down due to I am revamping it. 
which I'll have some merch coming up pretty soon. I'm just redoing designs and everything like that, the way God is leading me to do some things. So I'm changing a lot of things up. I've also changed the name from Swag Apparel to Swag by Design. So to incorporate my name, the God gave that to me as well to do that. So he's telling me that's how you brand it. You brand it with the name I gave you. So I'm branded it with the name he gave me. And so that's where Poet by Design comes from. I have a poem who's actually created out of the phrase that I use on my logo, which says, I was created for this. Dreams, passions, ambitions, a series of thoughts and images, nightly, inactive consciousness, active, distracted attention, purpose, motive, intention, worship, devotional reverence. Lord, I made you a promise and I vow to you my service, deliverance, emancipation, proclaiming my liberation, reasonable is my dedication, your grace is my salvation. Rescued, you said I was worth it. Mercy, I didn't deserve it. Lord, mistakes were made after you say, still, forgiveness when I never earned it. Eternity, life in the after, Lord, from everlasting to everlasting. With my eyes, eye, I try to visualize heaven I cannot imagine. Abundance and blessing, strength during testing. God, you sent the comforter when my soul was arresting. Mirror looking, glass reflector, me, striving to be your reflection, safety in the arms of my protector, lover of my soul, it doesn't get any better. Now, I'm writing these Psalms as I sit reflecting on your holiness, Lord, I'm regifting the gift you gifted me. Please have control of my pen, expressing gratitude, all praises to you. I was created for this. Yes, I was created for this. Thank you. Oh, we. You were definitely created for this girl. Poet by design. I ain't gonna say it. But yeah, <laughs> you were definitely created for a girl. I just dropped the mic. <laughs> I love that. That was wonderful. Mm, mm, mm. Girl. All right, next. Next poet, we will be having someone very special. I thank him so much for agreeing to do this for me. He lives in the same house with me. Here's my husband, Darren Johnson. Well, 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 I like to say uh, I'm loving it so far and I'm glad to be here. Um, I have to uh, take my little man, Ethan. Uh, I'm married to the host, the beautiful, most gorgeous woman I've met the host and you know I'm all things to be honest with you I am all things the main things I've been focusing on is my writing I got two books in the process I love writing skits I love acting and I love motivating motivating and you will see me out there and when you see just wave at me I don't know just wave so I just wave I'll wave back but I'm gonna be focused on reaching out to y'all with my words however I'm just excited to be here I'm going to get straight to my work, um, some work that I worked on, and then I'm going to go on and continue to listen to the rest of you all. Jamie Gray, Jamie Gray, mm, poet by the sign. Woo! Fire, fire. I was like, she better stop it now. All right. However, my title is I Am. I Am. I am a king. I am not a peasant. I am someone. I'm not just present. I'm heading towards the clouds. I'm not a pigeon. I'm reaching towards greatness. I'm not your average. I'm seeking for the teacher. I'm not a failure. I'm walking by faith. I am not without sight. I am hungry for change. I'm not resigning. I'm called to the front line. I'm not just pretending. I am finally meeting me. I am not Darren Eugene Johnson. I am that I am, and I'm not afraid to be me. Namaste. So thank you all for having me. Thank you, host, my beautiful wife. I'm gonna give it back over to you. I can't wait to hear the rest of the great work. This right here is awesome. Oh my gosh, you made me proud. Look at you. Great job, poetry and stuff. Great job, there. 
<laughs> Look at that. <laughs> trying to step into the realm. Come on now. I know, right? <laughs> oh, with all these natural born poets and stuff, he didn't came out the closet. Y'all got me over your blush. Y'all better go on now. Thank you. Thank you, though. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, you did an excellent job. For my next poet, we have Miss Nicole Grant. Or Freedom Girl. Oh, uh, whatever. <laughs> hello, 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 everyone. Uh, wait, hold on. Let me do this first. Hi, everyone. Just wanted to say hi. <laughs> um, I've been writing since forever. Um, I enjoy writing. That's all I can tell you. I've been writing since forever. Um, I don't longer call myself a poet. I just write. And I tell myself I'm a spoken word person. I just write. <laughs> um, so what I wrote is called What They Said. They looked at me and they said, I can never be that I would never be successful, that I would never raise my head, that I would never be joyful, nor no peace. They said I could not be an African-American lawyer. <laughs> that happened in 1815, attorney Macon Bowling Allen. They said that we could never be a doctor. Well, Dr. James McCoon Smith once again proved them wrong. What they said, never again allow them to tell you what you cannot do. Stand strong in your belief and be successful in you. What they said doesn't matter when you know you. Better is the end of a thing. They said we were not strong, yet we stand head held high all day long. Yes, they said die, yet we live. They said we would continue in poverty. Nope, millionaire for me. What they said could only be if you give it the victory. No longer accept what they said as truth in your head. Hold your head up high and know who you are. Walk strong and believe greater is he who lives in you all day long, what they said, hold, hold, know, hold, know the truth, what they said, when you believe in you. So who cares what they said? Don't get it twisted. Who is they? Those that said it could not happen. Black, white, green, or purple. They can be mama, daddy, sister, cousin. They can be, you can be your own they. So don't live in what they said. Renew your mind and forget what they said. Push the mic. Okay. Look at you, girl. That's how everybody should be. Don't even worry about what they said. You are whoever I am said you are. And it don't matter what anybody said. That's right. My next poet, I don't think he's on. He told me he was having trouble logging in. I sent them the link again, but I don't see him. He goes by the name the Fresh Prince of Peace, but he is not on right now. And Miss Sonia, Miss Sonia Stucky, are you here? I think she's here either. So I will move on with my next poem. I don't know if anybody else has another poem that they would like to share, but I do. I also so have another one you done. Okay. You said you do have another one? Yes, ma'am. All right, so my next poem is called Majestically Black. Beautiful black melanin friends, strong women and men. Black people shine from outside and within. Sometimes unequal because the color of our skin, but we make history in the end and we choose to win. Why is our history compressed in the month? Why is it a mystery to our loved ones? Our excellence was taught in school, in the school system once. Now they've erased us, enslaved us after all we've done. Black people are lit and so legit. So why is, which is why we're the unallowable hard to go up against. Our history is full of victories that will not fit in a month, decade or century. There's no minimizing it. Let's talk about some greats that graced the world and made changes. Let's start with Ali, a boxing champ that Hall of Fame did. 
float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. He was the greatest, so he showed it for all the world to see. There was Dr. King who marched for our civil rights, one of the greatest of all time to go down with the fight. A very important activist, Baptist minister and peacemaker who was assassinated for the change that came later. My girl, Maya Angelou was a powerful force of nature, full of elegant sass and was respected for her behavior. One of the most phenomenal poets to ever exist, a best friend to Dr. King, King and civil rights activist. Emmett Till was 14. He said his gruesome goodbye. Beaten to death, I gogged out and shot in the head to make sure he died. Falsely accused of flirting with a white woman who, a white woman with no class. He was attached to a cotton gin fan and discarded like trash. Claudette Colvin was audacious, came before Rosa Parks. At 15 years old, she had a lion's heart was told to sit in the back of the bus, but the middle is where she stayed, was the first woman to resist and then to be detained. Then came Rosa Parks of Montgomery, Alabama. She was small, but her actions hit hard like a hammer, refused to give her seat to a white man. And she was the reason why the Montgomery bus boycott began. Have you heard of Jesse Owens? He was a beast on the track. He set the long jump record almost 90 years back. There was Bessie Coleman, whose name has been silenced, but silence speaks volume when you're the first black pilot. Frederick Douglass was a slave who became an activist with a fight for equal rights and bringing slavery to an end. Malcolm X was a leader for the civil rights, supporting black nationalism and protection from aggressive whites. Nelson Mandela, Mandela wore many hats, president of South Africa. Did I mention he was black? He spent time in prison for his anti-apartheid work and won the Nobel Peace Prize for his influence on, his, on the earth. There's a plethora of others, but I'll drop the mic with Harriet Tubman, an escaped slave who freed slaves. Yes, she was quite a woman. She made 13 missions to rescue 70 slaves and used the Underground Railroad and the stars to lead the way. I don't know about y'all, but I'm black every day. And I celebrate my black excellence daily with a smile on my face. Our ancestors did a lot to get us where we are, from many marches, assassinations, and following the stars. Be proud of your history. Don't let it be a mystery. No matter what the world says, we're tattooed in your memory. We are a force to be reckoned. We are melanin magic. We are fierce and we pierce, the boldest, fastest, and baddest. We impact, we attack, we attract, and we act. Our names have changed the game. We are majestically Black. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And now, I know Poet by Design says she had another poem. Does anybody else have a po another poem that they would like to share? I just need to know. Well, Poet by Design, we are waiting for you, girl. Okay, that was awesome, Shai. That was awesome. You're always really good with the, how you put the words together. I find it very creative. And I know that, that. I know that, that comes from God because you have a, a very, very great gift. Oh, thank you. Okay, this is my second piece. Um, it's not really named, so I'll just do it. Poet, passionate one expressing thoughts. I verbally paint pictures with my mouth. Perception onto eternity's thinking. Mindset changed. I move different. By surrendering to divinity, I benefit spiritually, allowing God to use my creativity, being forever mindful. It is he, God, who gifted me. To me, it doesn't belong. It's on loan from the one who reaches low yet sits high up on the throne. Design. Blueprints sketched out in advance, predestined to activate when it did, chosen to do this since I was just a little kid. God's been watching, not on my clock in, never late, he's always on time. A unique master's piece, one of a kind. I am a poet by design. Thank you. Sorry. 
Okay, I was saying that was amazing. And something that I love about poetry is you can have many different ways of delivering your gift. A lot of people like to rhyme. You can have a pattern that's not rhyming, but in the end, it's something that you put your heart into. It's something that is very creative. Me, I say I'm the epitome of poetry. My life is a poem. I think poetry. I breathe poetry. I live poetry. I just love poetry. But, you know, like there's many different styles and we don't all have the same style. We might not all have the same sound, but we all have the same love. And we all love poetry. Anybody else have a poem they would like to share? You could be an audience member. You could be a poet for tonight. I got one. I wasn't going to do it, but I do have one. <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> Melanin, the pigment that gives human skin, hair, and eyes their color. Melanin, I am not. You melon, I am. Brown to black, beautiful I stand, never ashamed of who I am. Melanin, I am not. You melon, I am. Dark and brown, yes, I stand. Strong in who I am, never to be, never to be ashamed of who I am. You melon is where I stand. I walk in the room and leave my scent behind. You melon, I stand dark and beautiful. When he made me, he said she's beautiful. Fearfully and wonderfully made, I am. You melon, I am. And I stand strong, being you melon, not melon. <laughs> I love that poem. Oh, that sounded like. Oh no. Sounded like some. Gave off some Angela my my <laughs> Angelou vibes a little bit, you know. <laughs> had some of them vibes in there. I don't know if y'all seen that movie. Loved all that. I was going on the beach for a minute. I was all like, sure. <laughs> I know. I was all like, Melon, I am in Melon. I was like, where am I at? I ain't moving here no more. <laughs> <laughs> I know it reminded me of Love Jones. <laughs> Made me want to get my bongo out and start beating on it. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> well, Demetrio, do you have anything else you want to share? I could probably do one more if you want me to. Get us with it. All right, give me one moment. Okay, so this poem is called Fresh Breeze. All right. We are leaves in the fresh breeze. No matter the status or even prestige, we go into the same box when the in the morning, I'm mourning the past, scorning those who merely laugh. Because heroes in time I'm become helpless in decline is where my grandma's health is along with my own oops my phone acted up on me in terms of others of mine about my dad and my mother I worry all the time, all because undefined up, the come in the fall. Plus, when or we tumble slow, went in and out really bad. You what? You were going in and out. We couldn't really hear it. Oh darn! Uh, Y'all want to come back to me later? <laughs> Well, I think you're the last one that has another poem. Wanna try again? I think he's, did he log out? Oh Come no. Come back later for a second. <laughs> Oh, 
he he mentioned that he was going to come back for a second one. So I don't believe he heard you state that he was the last one. But if you are there, she was stating that you're the last one. If you did want to really do that, that poem that we didn't really get. Yeah, my signal's acting up a lot, so I'll just stick with the one I did. It's okay. Well, that seems to be all. Um, my other poets weren't able to make it on. Maybe they're having technical difficulties. I don't know one for sure was having difficulties logging in. And then Miss Sonya, I don't know what happened with her. I think she's on a different time zone. So maybe when I say Arizona time, she probably didn't see what the time zone is. So sometimes when I have people on different time zones, they pop in later and I'm like, mm, we're done now, but you know. So that is all I have for this afternoon. Would anybody like to say anything, share any words of encouragement, tell a poet how wonderful they are? Yes, my name is Yolanda Russell. I'm here in Phoenix, Arizona. I am the aunt of Jamie Gray. And I'm just so I'm just so delighted to hear from each of you, those that had their poetry uh, displayed. I, I can't uh, tell you how beautiful each of you stood out individually. And that's what makes poetry so beautiful because no matter how much you hear of it, everyone is individually. I guess we could um, say like uh, a rapper. When you hear a rapper, uh, they, they can rap and whatever they're rapping is not like the next rapper. You know, and so I appreciate each of your, your gifts. Um, and I know it's only from God because when you can put words to life and for people to feel it, it's beautifully displayed. So you all be encouraged and keep up the great work displaying your beautiful gift that God has given each of you. May God bless you in your endeavors. Bye. All right. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you so much for your words. You're so welcome. Anyone else have anything they would like to share? I'd like yeah, to I'd share something. Hello, my name is, well, let me turn on my camera. Hello, my name is Aria Crary. I'm a poet myself as well, but I've been having writer's block for a while. So I decided to join this Zoom to kind of get some inspiration. I really enjoyed uh, Janie's and Nicole's poems. They were very inspiring. I took in the part where she said, um, you are sometimes the they, and I think that's been something that's been resonating with me a lot lately is um, holding yourself back or letting yourself get your thoughts run away from you and things like that. Um, but all together, the poems are really beautiful and I love listening to them and I haven't been able to listen to poetry like this in a while. So I appreciate you doing this. Thank you so much for joining. Maybe one day we'll be able to hear your beautiful poetry as well. But I thank you for joining. I love having new people, new poets on here when I do do it. It's always inspiring to hear other people's work too. Because as a poet and as a person, you go through things. And sometimes you stop writing for a while and have to be inspired. But hearing other people always inspires and inspires me definitely. Because I have my times where I'm like, mm, I don't know if I want to do poetry no more. But when you have a gift, you know what your gift is. So I thank you for participating and for even listening and for saying something. Anyone else? I'd like to say something um, to the young lady who just said the writer's block. Um, for, for me, if I feel like I'm having a place where I can't write, which doesn't happen really, <laughs> and but there are times I don't want to write um, just based off of something I might be going through and I might not feel like writing, but words are always in my head. That's the reason why I have a lot of trouble sleeping because I always have words in my head. Um, what, I, what I've done is take paper and pen or if you'd like to type it out and just write random words random words of what I might be feeling or what I might be going through, just start writing random words. And out of random words, I've created poetry. 
And then I take it and I look at it and I say, okay, Lord, how do I put this in a way to recite it? Because out of random words came a poetry. That's how I get, I have so many random words just on my notebook and on my phone and pages, just random words. That's how I create poetry when I feel like I can't write or can't think of something to write. And trust me, your feelings will create a poem. Your thoughts will create a poem. It always does. So if you just start writing just random words, and like, I like listening to, uh, I have a certain music I like listening to when I want to in a creative mode. If you have certain music you like to listen to that gives you like um, feeling a calm or just feeling good, put that on and just start writing random words and I guarantee your block will be gone. That's what I just wanted to encourage you. I really appreciate that advice. Thank you. I'm going to try that for sure. with the, the poem that I did majestically uh, black <sighs> I wrote okay so of course you know I had to do my research on everybody some of this stuff about black history I remember from when I was a child but I wanted to make sure I included some people that's really not known so I wrote down names and then I wrote down what they did, what they participated in. And my husband was like, you know, he came to me, he was like, so let me hear some of your work. I didn't even have anything yet, but it's like, for me, when I have the concept of what I'm about to do, if I just have like some names and what they did, for example, how they were important figures of black history, as soon as I see it, I could just put it together. And I am a rhymer. I just, I don't know. I just love the rhyming pattern. I love all poetry, rhyming or not. It just speaks to the soul. But for me personally, I love to rhyme. So um, when I see something, I'm like, okay, let me get that word that's going to rhyme with that. <laughs> and I just start to put it together. But I'm just, I just wanted to share that. Um, maybe that would be inspiring on your journey as well. But I just wanted to share that with y'all. Also with being in the fact that this was created to be like a black history thing, I started out one way writing something and then it went another way. When I did, when I said the first word was dream, actually the, the poem itself, if I was to write it out and you saw it, each word beginning of each stanza started with the D-R-E-A-M. So it spelled out dream as I was doing the, po the poem. Um, that wasn't intentional. It just came to me as I was doing it. I said, you know what? I said, Lord, I want to make this a dream. So give me words that will spell out dream. So each, each stanza started with either D and then it started out with an R and then E and an A and an M. And then I ended it the way I ended it. But um, I do that. Same thing with the one I just did, Poet by Design. It also started out with the word poet and everything in there was about the poet. And then it went, the word by started the next one and then the last one was design. And then I incorporated the name that God gave me and said, I am a poet by design. So that's why, you know, I do things like that to make myself, push myself to be more creative with my, with my craft. And I also, like I said, I always ask God, I, I never be writing without talking to God about what I'm writing. Um, that's why I went a different way. I was going to do it. We're talking about what's going on in the world right now, but I did it that way, which still is dream because we are still dreaming about what God has for us. We are still dreaming. So it came out that way. And then what you were designed to be. So he let me focus on the fact what he designed me to be. So that's to encourage you to do what you're designed to be. Do what you're designed to be. What we do is not just a hobby. It is a ministry. So we are actually poetic messengers. That's what we are, poetic messengers. We are, we are getting people to choose God with our gift. That's what, that's what, the, that's what the job is. We are out there not just sharing poetry, but we're getting people to choose differently with our gift. So we're messengers, we're poetic messengers. So don't just see yourself like this is just a hobby and sometimes I get bored with it, I don't wanna do it. It's a task because you've been chosen to do this. Everybody's not born a poet. Everybody can't sit down and just write words and put them together. That's, it's your, it is what you're tasked to do. So yes, yeah, sometimes it gets heavy because it's a lot on you, it's a lot weighing on. Your words have power. And if you use them wrong, it'll force people to go this way or that way. And you want to force them to go God's way, get them to choose God's way. So we should always be incorporating God in everything we do because that's what we're supposed to be doing. It should, it should not be about, like, I just want to make it sound good. I just want this to be hot, to be lit, but it's supposed to be God first. 
And if you do that, he'll take on your I always tell him, take control. That's why I put in there, this, to me, it doesn't belong. It's on loan to me. So it's important how you use it because it is on loan to use. It's not your gift. It's God's gift. He's letting you use this gift. So if you've been charged to use it, then you got to use it the way he wants you to use it. If you want it to be used the right way, use it the way he tells you to use it. And it's always going to come out. But people always say how it sounds. I just wrote that poem, the second one, today. Just before we got on here, I finished it at 210. You're on mute, Jamie. You're on mute, Miss Jamie. What I was saying was, if you do it the way God is telling you to do it, the gift, because it's on loan to us, then it's always going to come out right. When people tell me that they like what I did, I always say, you know, God gave it to me. I never write anything that God doesn't give me. I never write anything he doesn't give me. So if we put God first, because again, we are poetic messengers and not just poets we're not just spoken word artists we are not doing this for hobbies we are doing this to reach souls so every time we get before people we should be putting that in mind that okay what does god have me to do what does he want me to say that's why everything changed when i started doing this when it was none of this was what i planned to do but it is what he instructed me to do so i did it this way but that's just to encourage every poet on here do it god's way and it looks like sonia has joined us Yes, Miss Sonia, we were waiting for you. Oh, uh, unmute. I'm sorry, I had to mute you because of the background noise. Let me unmute you one moment. Do you see it says ask to unmute? So I sent it to you. Do you see it? Okay, there you go. Okay, how late am I? Because I, I got the times confused. Um, well, you know, it's been an hour that we've been on. Oh my God. I thought it was three hours between Eastern time and Pacific time. It's okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. You are still on here, so you can still read your work. All right. Um, so um, how many are we doing? Just one? If you have two, you could do two if you two. want to. Okay. All right. Uh, I am so sorry I missed the first hour. But anyway, uh, we give God glory anyhow. Uh, the name of this piece that I'm going to read is called The Prodigal Ones. Proudly they parade, defying parental consent. Our prayers fall like rain on pavement places, hearts of concrete erected in defiance, diametrically opposed to the ordinance of peace, forgetting the law that was birthed into their members, proverbial sons who were taught while young and tender, choose youthful transgression, misspending of possessions that they never earned, no lessons to be learned, willing and ready to pay the cost of riotous living and inheritance loss. And we raised them. We gave them the good life with no expectation. Dishonor was allowed. They are haughty and proud, flaunting sin fragrantly in the face of God. And he sees them. We love them lavishly, made great provisions. We loose them too early to make sound decisions. We asked for compliance, but never made the demand. Disobe disobedience was allowed. It was hell's master plan. Youth falling into the enemy's hands and he lies in wait for them. His desire is to sift them like wheat, see their legacies die in the streets, living a lie and defying the truth, foolishly squandering all of their youth, stealing away the full length of days of long life and peace, stealing away the promise of fulfilled destiny. And it's a mockery. His strategy to devour the youth is subtle. He arouses curiosity in things undercover. He hides in the places that we parents cease to look in images, music, and all types of books, in games and movies and social media spots. Works of darkness are always his plot. Friends that we don't question and family values gone eschew. Households and havoc without any rules. And we didn't watch them. And now we prostrate. 
we fall and we pray. We stay at the altar almost every day, hoping to see our prodigal sons return. The parental heart yearns to lessen the pain of a child that's been left behind that brings his mother to shame. Where did we go wrong? We failed to keep them under our protection. We took their word instead of doing inspection. We changed the rules when they would not comply. We were afraid to upset them or make them cry. Parents suddenly became a friend. When they were wrong, we were too quick to defend. We cheered them on and gave them our blessings, never holding them accountable to learn any lessons. The prodigal ones, they don't just appear all at once. They reveal themselves early when we think it's fun. When Johnny or Jamila first learns to say no, we laugh and we chuckle and we just let it go. Children are wiser, they are quick to deceive, but parents are blinded by the things they receive. Straight A report they achieve. Straight A report cards, they're gifted and smart, talented and beautiful. They are the love of our hearts and we're gullible. We believe the lie and we melted at their smiles. We walked in denial. We put our own values on trial. When did it become okay to let our children have their own way? to turn off our ears to the arrogant talk. We dropped our authority and gave them dominion. Too busy listening to the world's opinions and now they're in trouble. The prodigal ones, they know who they are. The past they have chosen will not take them far. Living their lives from extravagant places, losing precious years, wading and wallowing in a cesspool of sin, needing to repent and do their first works again. And God is waiting. He is knocking boldly at the door of their hearts. Whenever you are ready, you can make that new start. The father will restore you with both robe and ring. Have you forgotten, prodigal one? You are a child of the king. Yes, that was beautiful. Amen. I'm so glad Thank you got you. on and shared awesome. that with us. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. And Thank you, thank you. We praise God. That's my message to my young people. <laughs> um, this next piece is called Lukewarm Lover. We're halted between two opinions. My people vacillate. Today, I am important, and tomorrow I'm just okay. Every time you need me, you call upon my name. In fear of the unexpected, you know it's really a shame. That's when the trouble resides. I'm instantly rejected, but I love you just the same. My devotion, my devotion is not predicated on your untimely responses. My compassion is far beyond mere casual nuances, faithful and everlasting, always giving the second chance. I laid my life down once for every woman and every man. Although you don't deserve it, love is who I am. I have known many sorrows, been acquainted with much grief, but I bore them all sincerely so that my people would have peace. Submission to my word is all that I require. I am your shield and fortress, no matter what transpires. When you walk through life's valleys, I don't leave you forsaken. I am the one who is always there when your confidence is shaken. My heart cries out for your faithfulness, but you only respond when you're under duress. No open display of affection. Your love is not shown in public because you serve me undercover. My love for you is fervent, but I'm like your lukewarm lover, never able to depend on you keeping of your vows. One day you are smitten and the next day you checking out. Ashamed to acknowledge me to your family and your friends. I could really be offended, but I take you back again. I walk with you in spite of your flagrant disregard. Life could be much easier because the transgressor's way is hard. I long to be with you daily to increase our connection. But the moment you leave my presence, you go in the opposite direction. You cease our intimate moments. I'm sorry. Call upon me while I'm near. Don't always wait for calamity to be the reason why you're here. I bid you come unto me while your time is long. Don't wait until the end game and live your whole life wrong. Don't wait for destruction and then try to run for cover. Come unto me now because I'm not a lukewarm lover. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. Love it. It was not. It was Love not it. By, by accident that it played out the way it did, and you got here when you did because every word you spoke. It's with me. Every word you spoke stuck with me. And to get me you know, and I want to say I'm thankful for a woman like you and a woman like Poet by Design and a woman like uh uh of Freedom Talk, you know, and, and I just want to say I want to say continue, continue because it's a lot of young people out here that hear you. It's a lot of young people that hear the body in you, the I am you. So continue to be that blessing until he called you home. And then I want to say to you too, poet by the time, it wasn't your poets that really hit me, it was your word. Your, your words just, they stuck to me, you know, and I know it was the I am saying, you are all things, you are an oak tree, you rooted, you are rooted in so many things. I just thank you yeah. for your words, poet by design, for shooting that off, because if it didn't get to nobody else, ladies, it did get to me. And I just want to say, God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Um, before we wrap up with any more words that anybody has to say, I'll share this last poem. It's not that long. It's called Be Ye Grateful. Every morning that we rise is another day of purpose not a tragic demise because I'm still doing Yahweh's service. We take for granted the breath of life when we're the living sacrifice. Jesus paid the final price on the cross he gave his life. Yet still we rise to terrorize while God cries, tears in his eyes. We repent and apologize, but it's nothing but lies. We turn back to our wicked ways. Sin de sins devour us daily. We should give him all the praise, yet our flesh is too lazy. Let's be thankful for our eyes that get to see the sunrise because every second, every breath, sun, someone's sunrise becomes a sunset. At every tick of the clock, our lives can come to a stop. Jesus can cut our ropes and our grace can be revoked. So let us be grateful for every beat of our hearts. Let us be thankful for the light and the dark. Let us be amazed at the birds in the air. Let us be dazed by the way that God cares. Let us stop taking our lives for granted because our harvest will grow from the seeds that are planted. Don't ever forget that you reap what you sow and as quick as you're here is as quick as you can go. Amen. Amen. That's good. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. Beauty and Thank you for sharing that. And that is all I have for you guys today. Does anybody have any comments before we wrap it up? Yes, I made it to <laughs> Johnson. Say that again. I said, I made it. I heard you do your poem. Just want to let you know I was here to support you. Thank you so much for joining us, sis. I look a hot mess. But here I am in the middle of cooking and whatnot. I don't know what you see. Let me see. Here I am. Come look. <laughs> Girl, I'm cooking. No problem. All right, you all. Well, that is all. I don't think anybody has anything else to say. So well, thank you all so much for attending the Art of Melody 2. We took Shot. Black History Month out with a bang. I thank everybody for being here, whether you were on time or you were late. You got to say something to us that ministered to us either way. So I thank you all once again for being here. You all have a re wonderful rest of your day. Oh, shy, shy, shy. I was going to say, let, let everybody know that I was here late, that it is recorded. You know, can get the, the uh, link or whatever for you. But everybody didn't know it was being recorded. They did not know. So, you know, somebody just came in and you can share that with them so they can get the beginning to the end. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you, husband, for mentioning that. It is recorded. So, if you would like the link, let me know because I did record it. And, huh? I like the link. Okay. I'll definitely send it off to anybody that would like it. Miss Tanya, I'll send it off to you since you missed the beginning of it. Send me by design. Too.
Yes, please send me the link. Uh, I had seen some people log in um, that I invited in like a few moments ago, so I know they missed um, all of it except for the last two. So send the link to me. I'll go ahead and share. What time did you? What time was it? Eastern time when you started? That I need to get that together. Let me say. You guys are about two or three hours ahead of us. I think yeah. Eastern time is two hour difference. So three o'clock Arizona time will be five o'clock Eastern time. Okay, oh, yeah. okay. See, I thought it was three. That's why I came in at six. So it, I should have came in at five. Yeah. East. Okay. Okay. So yes, yeah, so I will get that link to you, Miss Science, so you can hear everything else that happened. Okay. by design. I get that to you as well so your attendees could be able to hear it. And anybody okay. else that would like it, just let me know. Send me a message and I'll send it to you as well. Okay. But once again, thank y'all for joining me. Thank y'all for the support. And it was an awesome turnout. I'm thankful we took, like I said, we took Black History Month out with a bang. I like to do, when I do these, I like to do it at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. So thank y'all for being here once again and i hope y'all have a re wonderful rest of y'all day and i love y'all all right thank you love you too all right bye bye, -bye.